All right, all right. Hey, everybody, what's happening? It's Ed O'Keefe, and you are in my kitchen. You are in my kitchen. Let me see if this actually works better. I see a little razor over here. I have a little bit of uh, ADD, so I have a hard time sitting at the same desk all day long, and I think some of you may relate to that. So I move around in my house a little bit when I'm working. Um, uh, so, hey, today I want to talk about the 10-year wealth shortcut. And um, I, I'm stealing that that term from Travis Sago, or I should say I'll give credit to Travis um, because he's been an instrumental mentor in my life, uh, along with Roland Frazier. And um, uh, I want to tell you about like uh, there, there's like a slower way to accumulate cash flow and accumulate net worth, and there's a faster way. Now, admittedly, I... I, I'll give you, I want to give you a little background and then I want to like kind of sh talk to you about um, practical application of what I'm talking about. Because um, in my life, when I look, when I look at the consulting for equity model or services for equity, where we stick consulting on the front side or problem solving for equity, where we stick consulting on the front side. So you see the pattern there, right? Um, I, for some reason was, I got this in my head and I, I've done consulting for the last 20 years on and off. And um, well, let me back up. So everybody knows there's like, there's like three, three ways to really, uh, or four ways to really like uh, get leverage, right? Other people's time, other people's money and other people's assets. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about today uh, because um, that's going to be a, a massive one. So let's talk about other people's time, right? So you have time leverage, people working for you, uh, reps on the field selling for you. Um, my buddy Perry Belcher runs a, a VA. Uh, one of his companies is a VA, a virtual assistant uh, uh, business where, so he's got staffing that that is highly leveraged for companies. So he makes a small amount over a long, a large part of people, good margin there. Um, other people's money. And that's where you, you might look at like raising money for a business, raising money or uh, using the bank's money for real estate. Uh, to use a few examples, um, maybe you're a fund manager and you're making a percentage of, of investing other people's money. So these are all relevant. These are all relevant things, but they're all forms of leverage. Like how do you get, if I get a million dollars of somebody else's money and I'm able to put it somewhere um, and I get a percentage of that, that other person's money is working for me. You get the concept. It's just leverage, right? And other people's assets, um, again, like I, I never really thought about um, uh, utilizing other people's already functioning high valued business to build my own wealth. I just never thought of it that way. So for me, I'm going to give you a little background. I'm going to explain why like my story prevented me from seeing that as a viable option. And some of the belief systems that I was holding on to was actually sabotaging my ability to think, uh, think things should be easier, think things should be should flow nicer, to, that value is not created by my time and effort, but by my ability to leverage. Now, I always felt, I fell in love with direct response marketing because of the leverage. Now I'll get to that in a second as well. Um, but I always felt like that I had to have a massive amount of input into that leverage in order to justify my output, which is financial gain. And so um, it's something that really, I mean, I'm 46 now. Um, it's taken me a long time to figure figure this out. And I just want to encourage everybody in this group, especially with the Consulting for Equity. So so this video is is being designed specifically for people that uh, have raised their hand to learn more about Consulting for Equity. You either you either jumped on the webinar for consulting for equity with myself, Roland, Deanna Rogers, and Adam uh, Lyons, um, and you're in the Facebook group, or you're watching this on YouTube, or you're listening to this on a podcast. So I'll multi-purpose this uh, video. So for some people that are new to this, or they're listening on a podcast, like what is that talking about? So Roland Fraser and I have a program that he designed. It was his. It was his child called Consulting for Equity, and it was based on his stumbling into stopping to give free advice every time someone asked for it when he'd be at seminars um, and masterminds predominantly. People always wanted to pick his brain or they wanted to uh, utilize God a minute. And, and, and for some of you, just bear with me for like 30 seconds to kind of give the backstory because it's relevant. If you've heard it before, is um, 
you know, Roland is really, a, he's one of the most genuine guys I know. Someone asked me yesterday, how long have you known Roland? I've known him literally for, I think, 12 or 13 years. I was there at the beginning of War Room, which was Perry Belcher and Ryan Dice's uh, mastermind, which was at the beginning of Digital Marketer, which is now, um, they used to run uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit. And when I was around, this is back in the day, there'd be like 12 to 14 people. It'd be like me, Vinny Fisher, Jeff Usner. Uh, a few other troublemakers, Kent Clothier, Kent's great. He's, he's not a troublemaker, trust me. He's not one of the troublemakers. Uh, Ryan, Perry Belcher, and it was a small knit group, but Rome was always like considered um, the smartest guy in the room. Like he always won every Wicked Smart contest and Jeff Usner always did too and Vinny Fisher. And then there's a few guys that were just quieter. Mark Jenny was in the group and he's he sold this company for uh, I think over 50, $60 million. And he's, he's, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever met too. So um I feel really, I'm feeling really inadequate, as you can imagine, uh, sharing these stories now, uh, realizing how smart all my friends were. Um, but um, why was I sharing that backstory? <clears throat> so, so back then, so that's how long I've known Roland, right? And so a lot of this stuff, um, Roland always had a unique perspective because of his uh, legal background, uh, but also with a direct response uh uh, background because he was in direct mail. He was worked on behind the scenes of um, uh, infomercials. And um, so we, we were always friendly and we always, he always was very supportive of everything I was doing. And so uh, I'm kind of digressing, but this all came out of, you know, like when Roland partnered uh, with Perry Belcher, Ro, uh, Ryan Dice and uh, with digital marketer and traffic uh, and conversion summit, um, for many of you, you probably don't realize like Traffic and Conversion Summit was like 80 people, 70 to 90 people maybe. And it wasn't, it wasn't as this big conglomerate that it is now where they have 3,000, 3,500 people, hundreds of sponsors, multiple uh, education pathways. And um, I think Ryan would agree with me on this and, um, and Perry, like Roland came at a great time. He, he had a different perspective on, you know, like, hey, look at why are you guys using ticket sales to fund the event? Let's go get sponsors. Now that, that was a form of other people's uh, money, other people's uh, desired outcomes, like sponsors, like go find out all the people that want access to this tribe that you have, which is your asset, and then go get them to fund the event. And if you can flip it to where I think the first year they had about a hundred thousand in um, sponsorships, like before Roan got there. And then the next year it was over, it was over seven figures. And every year since then, um, it, it's it's just it's just it's grown into this massive thing that they ended up uh, exiting and and um, uh, I think a few years ago, and they still have controlling um, they Roland uh, maintained control over his intellectual property with Ryan and Perry of War Room. Uh, they still have vested interest in our things, and I'll let him tell more of the in depth on the details on that. But it's a classic example of hey, we need help. Uh, Rowan had a unique perspective as a consultant, came in, got equity, grew the business, exited, right? That's just one of many stories that Rowan has. I don't know if you knew that backstory, but, you know, I think backstories are worth sharing because even if you heard them before, they should be inspiring because right now in your circle, as you're listening to this, there are people who have assets that have a business or they have flow that if you were that problem solver at the right time and uh, they, the, the relationships we, we have inside the training, we have like talking about who's the ideal uh, partner. Um, and, and, and then part of it is objective. Like, is it profitable? Does it have cash flow? Does it have recurring revenue? Is it in an area where you have expertise on stuff like that? Like that's kind of like the objective perspective. But then there's the subjective. Do I like these guys? Do we, can we disagree but still problem solve together? Um uh, you know, there's a lot of subjective. Subjective is very, very important. Is my, is my gut telling me what's right? Did, did I have a couple mentors look at this deal? This is a huge one, by the way. And I've made more mistakes. Uh, I'll, I'll share some mistakes. I don't know if I'll get to all of them today because I think you'd need like eight hours to listen to all my mistakes. Uh, but, um, you know, did I have a mentor review or look over my shoulder at the deal in order to just give me the nod? Like, yeah, you're thinking accurately or ask this question. Okay. So even on my own partnerships and stuff, I definitely have Rowan look over my shoulder. I definitely reach out to Vinny Fisher to look at for me. There is no question that the third party mentor to look over your shoulder is, is um, it, it, it allows you to move forward faster with confidence and allows you to, to fix your blind spots and remove the emotional uh, biases that you're bringing into the deal. 
very, very important on all those factors, okay? It's not why I'm shooting this video though. I, I, I go off on tangents. Um, that's why I have my coffee. And uh, uh, it's perfect. So anyhow, Roland grew this up and, and uh, War Room is now uh, a mastermind that has, I think over a hundred people in it. You have Scalable, you have the Epic uh, live event. And at these events, you know, as many of you have probably found, Rome Frazier is one of everyone's favorites on stage. And when you grow to that size of a, of a, of a uh, event where you have 3000 people, there's a lot of things going on. One is you have a lot of demands being on you just purely because your objective is to make sure that everybody who's there is having a great experience. Uh, Ryan Dice, Richard, I mean, the whole team at Digital Marketer, uh, Deanna and her team are just phenomenal at constant. I mean, those guys are hustling the whole time. So you have those demands on you. You have your speaker demands on you. You have uh, people like Martha Stewart, uh, Lamonis, all these people coming in. So these are like the demands being put on Roland's brain all in those, in those time frames. And then you layer on the other side is like, hey, I'm sitting here having a cup of coffee or which I don't think he even drinks coffee, but I do. But like, like I'm, I'm in these spots and people are coming to ask you like, hey, do you got a minute? Or um, uh, can I pick your brain on something? And your natural inclination, especially many of you, I've met so many of you. And I, I think one of the things that I think uh, Roland and <clears throat> DM has done an amazing job is attract really amazing people. You know, like at the Epic event that Adam, myself, Rowan uh, were presenting all day on, the attendees were just such lovely people and just everyone was positive and uh, supportive and hustling and doing great things. Um, and so the one, the one obvious solution, the one obvious knee-jerk response is, yeah, I'd love to help you. And what happens though is that, and this is worth writing down, free advice is, 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 is the easiest advice to not act upon. It's just the easiest advice to not act upon um, because, and everyone knows that. And especially if you view, if like, so the, like, this is worth writing down too, guys. Like, so I, I have a, uh, uh, a client that I've partnered with on RevShare on the back end of his lead generation business. And um, <clears throat> uh, it's in the survival tactical space. And I help get him leads uh, through a third party relationship. Again, other people's assets, moving moving assets to asset value creation. And now we're talking about adding more continuity on the back end of his business. And the most likely people to jump into the next membership are people who've already said yes to the first membership. It's kind of counterintuitive. It's like the most likely person to uh, call up their plumber next year is somebody who used this a plumber a year ago, you know, I'm making this stuff up, but it's like people that naturally, like if, if you're in the, uh, if you're uh, in the uh, lawn care business, I'm looking out of my backyard right now and we didn't get our leaves picked up at the end. We got to get it done now. <clears throat> um, but the easiest person to sell lawn care to is somebody that every single year they re up and they, they, they are, um, uh, they like having someone else do their lawn. Somebody who, like my wife fired all of our lawn care services because she wanted our kids to do it. Um, if they talk to me 100%, we are getting them back on schedule. If they talk to my wife, my wife's like, no, my kids are going to learn how to do this. You know, I have seven of them. They should do it. And uh, so I'm looking out. I see piles of leaves. The kids didn't do it yet, guys. This is, you know, uh, Parenting 101. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. And so anyhow, um. So, so, so the key point there is like a buyer's a buyer's a buyer and you go after the buyers, right? So um, anyhow, I don't even know what I was talking about right there. So I kind of digress. Um, okay, so, oh yeah. So, so if people are, if you get free advice and they're not, they're least to act upon it, but somebody who exchanges money for your expertise and time. And this is where the mindset part that you got to lock into. Yesterday on the training that we posted into the consulting for equity model module, uh, on the 15 day sprint as a bonus to get your first client consulting for equity client. Um, I talked about Robert Ringer. I showed the book winning through intimidation. Um, uh, Ringer, that book was written in 70, 71, 72, but he talked about how that, <clears throat> you know, the, the biggest mindset that everybody has in deals and in selling and in business is you're looking around for permission. Okay. You're just looking around for permission. You're looking for somebody to say, yeah, you can charge that amount for your consulting day. 
You're looking for somebody to give you permission that you are in that your intellectual capital, your wisdom experience is now at a place where um, uh, you, you, you are credentialized. You have the authority. These are all terms that are, are like indoctrinated in us, by the way, from traditional, traditional schooling, uh, where we get degrees, where we get certifications, and we think in those terms. <clears throat> Listen, you want to be able to uh, uh, get the result and create value for a client. That is, that is the assumption going into this. But here's the deal. Your background and the certifications that you got to be able to, there's no correlation between certifications or, um, uh, you know, uh, accumulated wisdom and your ability to get them a result. Because, because here's the distinction. If you think outside the box a little bit, your ability to borrow wisdom. So for example, if you're like, um, if you find a client tomorrow that you are going to help, they need help with generating clients and they were uh, in the health space, financial space, tactical space. Um, <clears throat> I've even helped dentists. But if you were like any of those clients and you were like, yeah, I can help you. And here's my fee. It's 7,500 for a half day of consulting. And uh, we're going to show you a whole roadmap on exactly where to start, how to get leads, blah, blah, blah. But you don't have that experience, right? But you're a, a client of ours, like you're in the Consulting for Equity group. You could say, hey, Ed, <laughs> I'd say what? Like, hey, would you like to make, can I split my, uh, my consulting fee with you if you come on this call and just run the, or I'll give you 75%, you take 25%. If an equity deal comes onto it, we become 50-50 partners on that deal. That's borrowing my intellectual capital, right? And, and the, the reason why that's so, so important for you to like, actually, I should stop for a second and just explain to you like what just happened. If you sat and created the 10 people uh, or like, like say three to five topics you love helping people with, like lead generation, growth of sales, growth of profits, um, uh, m and I'm um, thinking of what else, um, infrastructure, organizational. You'll notice I never talk about infrastructure, organizational stuff, guys, just because I can't stand it. But that's why other people are good at doing it. Like if you just create a list of all those things that you like helping people with, and there's micro topics inside that, that as you talk through clients, you're not the best fit for, but you don't want to just refer people out to everybody else, okay? That's, this is a Roland Fraser move. Like you could refer them out to the agency. You could refer them out to this. Well, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get together. They're going to go make a lot of money together, but you were the network bridge. You brought network, uh, a network uh, asset to that table and you're not getting any f um, rewards for that relationship. It's a missed opportunity. Okay. It's a missed opportunity. And you, it doesn't, it, you know, it's got to be done within the zone of fairness, but <clears throat> why would you not with this new level of thinking when you got this flow of wealth flying past you, <clears throat> excuse me, why would you not dip your cup in there, overflow it for everybody and get rewards out of that? Okay. So one of the cool things that I want to share with you on this is that if I have access to Roland Frazier and I have a deal that's worth multiple millions or tens of millions of dollars, and I'm in the group and I'm a client, I would have the ability to bring that deal to the deal team, okay? And, and participate in that. Um, that's on a bigger level, right? So that's where your brain can really think, right? <laughs> um, there's a, a client in Epic, super awesome guy by the name of Matt. And all he does all day long is he lead generates people that are looking to sell their business. And he then qualifies them, positions himself as an authority, which is something that I talked to him about. Like you shouldn't be talking to all these unqualified people giving advice, um, which is where the consulting and the repositioning comes in. So that was part of my coaching. But what he does brilliantly is he's finding deals for people that have the funding for it. So he's, he's helping A, I'm mean like connect to B or connect to C and he's B, okay? So that's leverage. It's other people's assets, other people's money, other people's time. You know, you're totally, you're, that's a triple asset. We should probably create a ranking on that, okay? Um, so why am I sharing this, okay? So, so 
I want to tell you, I want to tell you two quick stories. This video is going longer than I had expected. So, but I want to talk to you about like, I grew up in a blue collar family. Uh, my dad was, a, was your, your type of guy, electrician, uh, who, when you asked Jack O'Keefe, um, like how work's going, he would say, like, we have this tradition, like big family, 13 kids, eight brothers, four sisters. And when we got our report cards, I don't even, I don't even think my dad looked at our report cards. He would take his Amelia to Fox's, which is the, like the local uh, restaurant, pizza, you know, uh, bar. And um, he would just, <laughs> me and my siblings would sit at the table, he'd order us fries, pizza, Cokes, whatever. And he'd, be, he'd sit up on the, on the stoop and he'd be so happy. He'd be like, he's like, yeah, they all got the report cards. And uh, I don't think one person asked how they did. I think he would just say, oh, they did amazing. And, and I think at the time, um, we were like C, like all C students, B minus students, like our parents were just trying to get us through. But, but there was a very, uh, and then uh, out, of my, out of my brothers, the, all of them either went into the, the, the electrical union or the engineers union. Now, here's why I'm sharing all this stuff, right? There was a high emphasis on, if you put the hard work in, the world's gonna pop it out for you. Effort, time, effort, time, economy. And so when I started learning direct response marketing, I'm kind of skipping some steps here, but just for speed and sake. Um, and and I and I when I learned copywriting, I I I realized that copywriting plus direct response for me at the time was the path towards uh, making money. It and I and it clicked, and I was like, I'm just going to master this. I don't know if you ever had something like like, hey, if I'm just going to master this one process. But, but at the age of, I think, 26, 25, 26, maybe even 24, I was all in on that because I was tired of being broke. And, um, but that's a very effort, hard work, effort driven thing with a high leverage, high leverage potential. Okay. Now, here's why I share that is every business I've started, and I'll do this on a different video. Every business I've started, I've usually started from scratch, self funded. And time and effort with the idea of leverage to get it up running and going. And as many of you know, the old phrase of it, 80% of the gasoline is used on, on the, on the uh, takeoff for a, a, an airplane. Well, 80% to 90% of your cash to, to get it started, your best thinking, because the hardest part, if you ever read Michael Masterson's book, um, Zero to 100 Million, and he talks a lot about zero to a hundred, zero to a million. Usually you're not making any money yet. You're working your butt. That's not totally true, by the way, for consulting. So one consulting and high ticket coaching, you could be cash flowing within, you know, 30, 60 days because of the margin, but you are trading time for dollars. Okay. That's not always a bad thing. If, if you don't have these other components, <clears throat> but it, in a, in a product business, you know, it's, it's your optimum sales structure, your upsells and then lifetime value. And with the expensiveness of media channels now today, you have to have what Dan Kennedy would call slack adjusters, where you could sell a high ticket item where margin pours into your business. High ticket coaching, consulting, uh, um, big big ticket offers. We did this when in supplements where we'd sell six bottles out of the gate as, as an upsell and a small percentage take that, but that small percentage pays for the other 80 percent you know um and we, obviously we can go in depth on all these topics because they're just great topics but um the problem is here's what's worth writing down the problem is is that if 80 percent of the effort is used there and the money and all the risk is there and you are doing it alone on yourself then what if it doesn't work what if it doesn't work and so for me, I had a couple, what I would call doubles or triples. Home runs, I would consider you exit, you grew it fast, you scale, you exit, and you get uh, a nice chunk of cash that you're sitting on, or you have a business that's just perpe uh, perpetually pushing out cash and you never have to worry about money again. So, so, um, so I had a couple of doubles and triples. And so the inaccurate thinking, I had a lot of dogs, dogs out of the house real quick. The inaccurate thinking part was, the inaccurate thinking part was that, well, hey, I could just do this. I could do this at will. 
Like I am so good at copywriting and offer structure and all the elements of launching a business that I could just keep popping these things out. But then, then something happened. You wanna know what happened? Um, a couple things, there was a lawsuit in one of the companies in the supplement business. So that, um, that's a poor staff hire, chief technology officer, totally different topic. But then the, and I learned so much by the way, you should always have mentors, uh, your, your, your highest level employees that you bring on. If you're gonna abdicate and give them massive responsibilities, you definitely need to bring in outside mentors to help uh, uh, interview them. Because in this, this chief technology officer, if I would have had one or two of my buddies, like if I would have had Vinny Fisher just interview the guy um, before agreeing to bring him on and give him so much responsibility, um, that business would have never had a, a tech like blow up. It blew up on me. He got us into a lawsuit with a billion dollar company by signing contracts. It was just one of those like, but I, it's my fault. It's all my fault. Cause, cause I, because I didn't do these basic things that could have prevented it. Um, and then when I launched another company, which is a food company, uh, I made mistakes there as well on the launch. So the la- here's the point. The launch side is the most risky, hardest part. Okay, why do I share all that? Because the good news is, is that this would led me, even with those a few successes there, I had this epiphany where I was like, something is, something is, I'm doing something wrong. Like, why am I always the one taking all the risk, putting all the effort, my unique insight into something? And if it doesn't work, you know, like why are these other people flowing and easy? So I I have two conversations. I'm going to tell you about them, right? So these were, these were my leading conversations. Like, like I'm, I, I was like sitting there by myself being like, I've invested all the time, put the 20 some years of in the trenches in place, I could easily be doing consulting, but I didn't want to do just consulting. Like this was very important for you to understand. I I like being on the upside of things. I'm an entrepreneur at heart, probably like you, where you want to be, hey, because there's nothing worse than like when you you come in, you get paid 10 grand and you open up a multi-million dollar profit center inside a company and two months go by, they paid you 10 grand uh, for a few months of consulting and you're you're like man i i could have i could have i could have done this differently because they didn't see any of these opportunities so i had two conversations one of them was Rowan fraser which i'll get to you in a second and one was with travis Sago. and travis Sago was like ed i've done i've done everything that you're doing he's like um the one thing that i stopped doing is i stopped doing anything that was on the front end marketing i just only work with people's customer databases and i was like holy crap that is that is i'm like that's insanely <laughs> i was like and we talked it was a longer conversation like we talked about affiliate marketing we talked about lead generation because i have passions on all those topics. Like, i love i love learning and i love studying i love running seminars i love learning uh how media works i love all that stuff but one thing worth writing down when you look at a business's matrix the dormant money is always like, so by the way, we get you as a client and you come in and and we like, uh, let me back up. It's a little sales pitch for consulting for equity. So one of the key like little magic tricks when you are with a client is they're always going to want to talk about the new shiny idea because their staff gets stressed out when they talk, everyone gets stressed out. They always want to talk about the new shiny idea. But if somebody's already generating customers and they got a past database <clears throat> of customers, I don't have I don't have my thing charged in. So give me one if they don't have if they then they're the fastest, easiest path to driving net revenue and net margin to their business is always by getting them to do a campaign to their, or, or that's what we do for, by the way, that's what we do. Like one of, one of my businesses is we take high ticket, we take low ticket buyers, sell them high ticket packages. And we have a unique process that nobody does. And Travis Sago is a guy who helped me with this process. And um, it, it just works. It works. You're, you're experiencing some of it, by the way. Um, and, but the thing is, is nobody wants to look at their existing customers. 
And we generated 80, 80 extra leads yesterday from a list of people that most people would look at and say they're not interested anymore. Well, now they're raising their hand. Could be another six figures in the next week just from that list. With my other buddy, we, we are identifying, a, uh, by, by identifying two-time buyers. So they bought this, they bought the next thing. Boom, they should get a trigger to another offer. We can add a whole nother profit center by, by identifying that because he's not doing it yet. This is in the tactical business. Like, oh, everyone thinks linearly, guys, just so you know, everything's linear, like A through Z. When offer matrix, offer an offer matrix should be behaviorally uh, communicated with. When people, this is worth writing down. This will make, this will pay for everything you ever do with me. When people are in heat, there's a window, whether it's three days, seven, 15, 30 days, that they should get as many offers. If they start buying, they buy again. Boom, you should send them the best offer, highest profit offer, highest profit offer, and just keep going because they're in heat. You know, golfers, when they start thinking that they got to improve their game by buying <laughs> buying equipment, you should be selling them everything you could possibly sell them. Um, so that was Travis kind of opened me up to it. And I was like, well, th this is too easy. Like, why are we, I mean, we're just going to mail, we're going to do direct mail to existing customers and we're going to sell them stuff. And that's what we do. And that's one of the reasons why Ro and I are working together because I did that for him with one of their programs and we started talking and, and he's like, do you think this would work for this and that? And I was like, yeah, let me just drive it out. And so I just do it for you. You know, um, that's number, number one of two. Oh, and then with Roland. So we started talking and Roland and I have been friends for a long time. So then Roland starts telling me, he's like, Ed, I got to tell you about what I've been doing this consulting thing. It's, it's just, it's fun. It's easy because it fits within his skill sets and it's just profitable as all get out. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? And that's where he started telling me, he's like, we, you know, he's like, I started just charging for my time. He's like, I've, I've avoided it for all these years. And I start charging for my time. And he said, here's the craziest thing. Every deal that I end up in, in where like I either become partners, I get equity, or we, we, we create, we get immediate cash flow uh, off of it. Uh, comes from already getting paid. And I was like, all right, so cool. Like I didn't, I didn't get this at first guys. I did not get this at first. And he, and it took me to the, like the third time he told me that I was like, Oh, so you're growing your net worth, but you're, you just added a profit center. It's a seven figure profit center through consulting off situations where you used to just give free advice. And he was like, yeah. Okay. Now, why is this so important? Why is it so important? Okay. So if I back up and you and I are talking, I said, look, do you see what's happening? Most of us are trained. We're just trained. And I use my example systematically that the busier you are, right? The busier are doing stuff, the more output is going to come into your life, right? Remember like my old, my old, my old uh, story of growing up in a blue collar family, uh, which I love, by the way, I think every, my, so much of my mindset comes from that. The, the hang up comes from though, it, it's, it's a time for money trap that, um, <clears throat> that is really tough to just escape out of until you, unless you're going to add leverage into that. Okay. And so I had to work and process out of that. Now the consulting for equity model is identify your level 10 dream client. So this is your job now. Who do I want to pay me for solving problems that I'm uniquely qualified to solve their problem, which we can help you on the uniquely qualified part. But I have a feeling if you're watching this, there's already things that you're drawn to. Like if you love copywriting, great. But, but what if you had a, a, a fee, whether it's 2000, 5,000 upfront to do a proper recommended action plan based on your consulting. Okay. Instead of just giving away free stuff and doing stuff for free. Okay get paid five grand, get paid 10 grand, then get paid more for writing the copy, then get paid royalties on the back end. And then you also structure it to be like, well, here's the deal. Do you want me to own this side for you? They're like, yeah, okay, cool. This is what that would look like then. And there's the royalties and, and equity. So you're getting paid immediately, you get paid ongoingly, and then you get paid infinity, right? As the business grows. So <clears throat> it's a reframe, 
Okay, it's total reframe on how you look at where you inject yourself. But let, let me explain this. If you are able to, to jump, jump in the flow of businesses that are already pushing momentum, they've already put the time in, they're already driving customers, they've already put the money in, right? Other people's time, other people's money, other people's assets, they already have customers, they already have um, offers, they already have all these things and you may jump in and just provide a network. You may just jump in and provide a solution through a service. You may just jump in and provide mentorship, wisdom, and guidance. Okay. That's where you may come in and, and it depends on yourself and it depends on them, right? In that level 10 ideal dream client. So that's what I want to challenge you with today. And, and so, you know, um, if, if this sums, if this is like, Hey, Ed, I, I really want to be a part, I'd love to get, I'd love to learn more about consulting for equity. I want to be a part of the mentorship that you and Roland um, have going on. I want to continue to learn and master this process and simply email me at ed at consulting for put in the subject line CFE um, or uh, we don't have a text message yet, but I want, uh, I do, but I, I want to, we're getting a new number on it. Or you, if you, this is on Facebook, you can private message me or you can simply put in the comments CFE and then one of us will get back to you and then we'll get you all the details on it. So obviously <clears throat> the reason why we put all this education on here is because this is really a mental shift that opens up doorways. So in the past where, and whenever there was like an opportunity, I would dive in full for a board trying to prove how good I am at executing. And that's just not the right move because what happens is you end up doing deal after deal after deal where you've put energy, time, advice, uh, you've, you've demonstrated stuff and, and you just end up being the guy with no broke. I think as Roland likes to say, like deals without cash are equals, uh, uh, you're broke. <laughs> Deals without cash is equals you're broke. So the shortcut, the shortcut, the 10 year wealth shortcut is you look at other people's assets. You look at other people's flow. You look at other people's, um, you know, like their, their infrastructure, their time, it's already happening. And we're going to inject ourselves in there. Now I told a, a, a client of ours yesterday, I said, the biggest breakthrough that I've had is that I only like I only search for people and I'm on the lookout for people that already, this is from a partnership perspective. I don't want 20 partners. That's not how I operate. Um, I, that uh, I'm only looking for people that are already, this is my, this is my filters. You can have different ones. Okay. They're already absolutely killing it. They're absolutely killing it or they're right there. And for me to create massive value is simply adding like a small little, uh, a small little shift, a small little, uh, uh, maybe, a, maybe a, like for, for backend high ticket coaching, it's, it's our simple little sales process that we've designed that works like magic. Um, but it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of uh, sweat equity because we're borrowing their current marketing that's already working, their current offer that's already there and we're leveraging that, okay? So just, just think about that. Like Roland does a lot of deals where he's the network connector, okay? He's solving problems through his network. Um, I have two deals like that right now that, that in partner, I should call them partnerships, that it's, it's because of my network that now flow is, has opened up for everybody. And we're gonna talk a lot about flow because it's something that I just want you to keep on your eye, like as you're walking around today, like, what does he mean by flow? Where are things flowing? My son and I went to, we were in the uh, Orlando airport and we went to Chipotle. Chipotle had a line of 16 people wrapped around the thing. And over here on the, the Oriental like um, uh, shop, there was two. Who has more flow? Chipotle. Now your illusion would be that the easier person to partner with is the person that has less flow. And I'll tell you that from experience, it's the person that has too much deal flow because they have different issues. Like, so if you went to Chipotle and you said, look, like what's a harder sell? <clears throat> what's a harder sell? You go to the Oriental place and be like, hey, you notice Chipotle over there? If you give me your marketing budget, I'll need 5K to run it. And then we're going to go find and make people up. Well, make people line up just like Chipotle, right? And that person's going to be like, well, I don't have that deal flow. So I don't have the money that, that Chipotle has, right? 
I don't have the money that Chipotle has. So where am I going to go pay you to go get me clients? Because I've been in this business for 15 years. All right. You're tracking me guys. That's the resistance there. But what if you went to the guy at Chipotle and said, how many stores do you have in the country? You're like, oh, we got about 600. Would you be open to the idea of me showing you how to get two to three times the amount of people through your, your line without sacrificing any um, quality, creating a better experience and doubling your profit without spending an extra dollar on advertising or anything else like that? And so instead of having 16 people uh, lined up waiting 15 minutes, we're putting 45 people through in the same amount of time, but nobody's sitting here waiting. Cause look at all these people going to all these other things. I could, I could do that. Don't pay me anything. Here's what I want. <clears throat> I mean, I, I just, I just took away the consulting for equity model, but um, I can show you a little trick in, in less than an hour that would do that. And my team can implement it for you. If, if you know, they'd be like, how do you do that? Now you don't go into how do you do that right out of the way and be like, this is how we work. Okay. Here's, here's what we do is I need a few minutes. I need a little bit of time to understand exactly how you have things built. The way we do that is through a half day consultation or it could be two hour consultation. And then if we decide to work together, uh, I'll show you exactly, you know, on, on our, uh, our green light, red light systems analyzer, exactly how much money we think we can get for you. And then, um, I have a recommended recommended action plan, exactly how you do it. Now, the, the, what you want to know is that there's a couple of ways that we get paid, okay? It's either a ridiculously high fee, which I don't recommend because it puts risk on you, or um, you do the initial fast start. After that, we either come in and this is our, this is our structure. And then you can just negotiate the structure, right? It's a performance basis, okay? Um, and if it's the right fit, then you're like, hey, and then I think I can help you grow this and sell it. And so in order to do that, have that focus, time and effort on it, here's what I'd like to propose. Or what would that be worth to you? What are you thinking on your end? You know, like, this is, Roland's a better negotiator and a better deal structure of mine. But hopefully today was about like, that's how you get leverage. <clears throat> better clients, higher, that already have money, they pay you more, so you're more excited, you could focus on less people, um, you can enter their flow, which means recurring revenue, right out of the gate, predictable income, right out of the gate, and then, uh, long-term opportunities. Now, a couple of things is not every client is somebody that you want to have a long-term opportunity with. Okay. So we're going to walk you through exactly what deals you want to do, what deals you don't want to do. You want to have ways to test things out so that you're not making all these promises. Like, yeah, great ideas are great ideas. But if something is not, I, I was working with a client where they said they had 16,000 customers. I sent out two emails. We had eight leads. We had eight leads out of 16,000 customers. They told me a couple of things. They had a poor relationship with their customer base. The customer base, the, whatever they sold them the first time didn't perform well, you know? And so that's something that I don't want equity in that company. I don't want, I turned down uh, like on paper, what looked like a phenomenal deal, but in, in practicality, it was a horrible deal. You know, they were trying to put all the risk on me to like, to make their business something. No way, man, go find a business where you could take 300 leads. Like in my business, I could take 300 leads and squeeze out 30 sales of five grand a pop. That's so much more enjoyable than go get a client that's 30,000 customers and you're in the same amount of deal flow. It's crazy. So anyhow, got to go uh, emailing ed at consultingforequity.io.io. Uh, post in the comments um, and then maybe I'll, I got to figure out, we, we have a tech service that I'm just not, uh, we're getting a new number. So that's why I'm not posting that here. So otherwise, hope you enjoyed it. Have an amazing day. Appreciate you. It's Ed O'Keefe. And, uh, you know, we want you to win. So we're going to keep, keep banging these uh, little videos out and our trainings are, we're just committed to seeing consultants, high ticket coaches, service providers, professionals like yourself, just crush it. So, all right, have a great day. We'll talk to you. Bye.